I've been trying to buy PS5 for months and it's still out of stock and that is because of some chip shortage. Are they out of some potato chip or something? Not potato chips are genius. They are semiconductors. They power everything from your PS5 to high-tech military weapons. They control your world. Oh great. So now some tiny tech chip is running my life. Even these tiny chips decide which country is going to dominate the world in future. Also they control our stock markets as well. Wait, I also invest in stocks. Tell me how to make money out of it. But first tell me what is semiconductor and why it is so important and what government of India is doing about it. All right, I got you. Watch this video to find out everything about semiconductors where I have covered from history to future even where you can invest in Indian stock market. In 1959, these two American scientists, Robert Noyce and Jack Kilby, did something which changed the world forever. They made a thing called transistor. A transistor is nothing but a on and off switch which used to control the flow of electricity. But here's the catch: they are super compact and replace these complex wire networks previously used to operate computers. After a few years of inventing a transistor, some guys decided to cram down multiple transistors into a single thing. For this, they use silicon. It's an abundant material present on Earth. Silicon does not conduct electricity alone but when mixed with phosphorus it becomes a semiconductor and this is exactly what they wanted to precisely control the flow of electricity and this invention of semiconductor changed the world forever these are the tiny electronic switches that can either allow or block the flow of electricity representing ones and zeros the binary language that a computer uses these transistors are combined into logic gates which perform basic operation like and or not when billions of these transistors put together into a single silicon plate and by controlling the flow of electricity in very specific manner they can be used to perform mathematical calculations and all this calculation can be done in fraction of seconds actually in microseconds the more number of transistors you can fit on a single plate the faster it becomes that's the reason why our tv phones and laptops are getting more and more compact over the time as the whole technology was developed by america they were the leader in semiconductor sectors from designs to softwares and even that time they were the leader of semiconductor manufacturing in the whole world every year us is cramming more and more transistors into a small silicon plate making them faster they are using this technology on nasa projects automobile industries and gadgets like phone calculators speakers essentially in every electronic devices but they didn't stop here this technology is also being used for something which gives us an edge over other countries it's highly sophisticated and advanced weapons A factory in which a semiconductor is made is called a semiconductor fabrication plant. In short, we call it fabs, and it's not easy to maintain these fabs. USA was investing billions every years just to maintain these fabs and keep things running. When USA was manufacturing these chips, meanwhile, a lot of country realized the potential these chips have, and they also want to produce their own chips, for which they started doing research and development. But back then and even till now the real competition is not about manufacturing a chip it's more about making a chip smaller in size just keep this in your mind the smaller the size of these chips becomes the more advanced and faster they get obviously since USA was the first one to design machines fabs and softwares they were ahead of everyone now a very interesting event occurred that changed the geopolitics forever a very small country taiwan which at that time had no leverage over other countries and was also claimed by china as a part of its territory taiwan needed some sort of leverage to use against china in case of an invasion taiwan government realized that a lot of their super skill engineers were actually leaving taiwan for better jobs and education opportunities so government called their engineers back by promising them to give everything they ever wanted and in return government does not want anything except they had to work and build companies within taiwan it was a win and win situation for semiconductor engineers so they agreed 
Maurice Chang, one of these engineers, he realized that USA was pouring billions every year into fabs, a process many found to be a huge financial burden. Chang's idea was to join hands with the USA. He offered America to give him the fab design and the sawdust that are needed to manufacture semiconductor. And with the help of Taiwan's government, Maurice Chang will manufacture these semiconductors in Taiwan. So Taiwan will not design anything, they will not make the softwares. Chang's plan was to simply master the process of semiconductor fabrication. America really liked this idea because running fabs is one of the most complex and expensive process. Till now, USA was pouring billions every year into fabs. But after this deal, Taiwan will do this expensive job for USA. So Maurice Chang started a semiconductor company called TSMC and Taiwan government as promised gave him the initial investment for setting up semiconductor manufacturing units. In one of his interviews, Maurice Chang said that Taiwan's government called a top businessman and they literally forced him to invest in TSMC. This shows how serious the government was about semiconductor manufacturing. The plan of Taiwan government worked really well. Now Taiwan is the world's biggest manufacturer of semiconductors. All the USA is the one who designs the chips, works on software part, but for the physical chip, they have a dependency on Taiwan. Just like USA have a dependency on Taiwan for the physical chips, there are many countries which are interdependent on each other. Let's explore the global journey of semiconductor supply chain. It all starts in the UK, where semiconductor IP companies create blueprints for the chip designs. Next in USA, fabless firms use advanced softwares to design complex chips. Later, they ensure these designs are ready for manufacturing. In Netherlands, specialized machines like lithography equipments are made. These are the essential tools for chip fabrication. Germany contributes by providing the specialty chemicals and the materials fabs need to make chips. Silicon is the base material for all these chips and it is sourced globally and then processed into wafers. Now layers of transistors and circuits are built into silicon wafers, creating the actual chips. All this process is done in fabs worldwide. After that, chips return to USA for rigorous testing to ensure they are flawless. Assembling and the packaging part of these semiconductor is done in Malaysia. Then China takes over to integrate these chips into finished products like smartphones and electronics. Finally, these devices reach consumers worldwide, powering everything from phones to cars. We all countries are really interconnected. Now the story of China started. They also wanted these high-tech chips for their country. So you know what China did? They simply started buying chips from Taiwan. They literally bought 40% of the world's chips from Taiwan. And they are using these chips for their military, advanced radars and missiles. USA was so confident that a country like China could not even come close to them. After all, USA had spent 50 to 60 years of research and development in semiconductor sector. But China being China, they always wanted to be at the top of everything from military to economy. They quickly realized they needed to produce their own chips. But making high-tech semiconductor, it takes years of research. By years, I mean 40-50 years of research. But China doesn't like to wait. So you know what China did? They simply bought all the designs and softwares needed to manufacture semiconductors directly from private companies of USA. China wanted softwares and equipment. They got it from USA. China wanted softwares to design chips. They bought it from USA. China wanted high-tech chips for manufacturing. They simply bought it from the USA. American companies literally sold every bit of research, softwares and design to China and no one seemed bothered by this. But in 2021, China built an advanced weapon system, specifically a hypersonic missile. It is so fast that a US radar cannot even detect it. And the semiconductor used in this missile was designed by USA. So China uses American technology to get ahead of America. That was the day when USA got bothered and they decided to cut down China's free trade agreement. Fundamental change is taking place today, politically, economically and technologically. The Biden administration published a, a large set of export controls on Friday in order to slow Beijing's uh, technological and military. The restrictions will limit Chinese companies' access to advanced computer chips and slow their progress in artificial intelligence. In short, no more chips for China. USA blocked all the companies which are using American designs and softwares from doing business with China. It means no more super chips, no more equipments, and no more advanced softwares. Nothing for China. But these sanctions just not affected China, they also affected American companies because their biggest customer is suddenly banned. 
Nvidia lost around 400 million dollars worth of business and a lot of American companies were in the edge of getting bankrupt. Don't worry, America cannot let them die just because of China. And as of now, USA finalizes up to $6.6 .6 billion of funding for chip giant TSMC to build their factory in USA. Similarly, everyone realized how important a semiconductor is. That's why a lot of countries are pouring billions of dollars into semiconductor sector. China government have a plan to give $200 billion of subsidy in setting up semiconductor plants. Japan have $43 billion subsidy plan. Europe government has passed European Chips Act with a budget of $167 billion. USA is giving $54 billion to companies for research and development. Now imagine a future where India becomes the third largest automobile industry by 2030. Now pair this with another ambitious target set by PM Narendra Modi. The electronics industry reaching a whooping $5 billion by the same year. But here's the twist, both of these industries cannot grow without one key ingredient and that is semiconductors. These chips comes in multiple sizes, the smaller the size gets, the more expensive and complex the process gets. Different sizes of semiconductor are used in different electronic gadgets. Right now, India is focusing on 28 nanometer semiconductor chipset. This chipset is widely used in cars, refrigerators, and everyday electronic appliances. In semiconductor value chain, there are five crucial stages. First is the design under which fabulous semiconductor companies, electronic manufacturers, and independent design companies fall in. Second stage is front-end manufacturing where each wafer is diced into multiple chips. Under this stage, foundries and captive factories comes in. The third stage is back-end manufacturing. Here, chips are assembled into packages to form the electronic component that can be mounted on circuit boards. Here, outsourced semiconductor assemblies and tests are involved. In short, we call it OSATs. And this is the most important stage of this value chain because this is where India is focusing right now. In the fourth stage, chips are integrated by electronic manufacturing services and original equipment manufacturers. The last stage is consumption, where electronic manufacturing companies falls in. Now have a look on this graph. This tells us the market size of each part of the value chain. Recognizing the importance of semiconductor in today's world, Indian government has launched India Semiconductor Mission. This mission aims to transform India into a global hub of semiconductor manufacturing. The total budget of this mission is 76,000 crores under which the government will give 30% fiscal support in these three categories. In the first, government will help companies to set up the semiconductor fabs. In second category, government is helping private companies to set up their display units. And in the third category, government is helping private companies for developing compound semiconductors and setting up OSET plants. Globally, TSMC and Samsung are the world leaders in semiconductor manufacturing. These companies are already manufacturing 3 nanometer chipset, which is highly expensive and complex to make. And it's pretty hard to beat these two companies because the expansion cost in semiconductor sector is insanely high. Automobile semiconductor takes $10 billion for an expansion, laptop takes $11 billion, tablet takes $12 billion. $14 billion for smartphones, 5G technology chipset takes around $16 billion for expansion, and virtual reality takes whooping $18 billion for expansion. And that is the reason why India is focusing on 28 nanometer chipset. It's not that expensive to make, and according to Indian market, this is the perfect chipset we can make right now. There are multiple companies which are investing in India for semiconductor manufacturing. Micron is investing $2.75 billion. CG Power announced an investment of $79 million. Kynes Technology have a plan to invest $344 million. And Tata Electronics is also coming up with multiple plants in Gujarat. To manufacture a semiconductor, there are multiple raw materials involved. It takes around 250 types of specialty gases and 300 types of special chemicals. Like special gases and chemicals, there are multiple industries which are directly involved in semiconductor manufacturing. So we have figured out 13 different categories which are going to get benefit out of this semiconductor mission. The first is industrial gases. Here the beneficiary company will be Inox India and Linde India. These companies manufacture, supplies and install cryogenic tanks and system for storage, distribution and transportation of natural gases. In second, we have the companies which are handling industrial gases in which Kynes technology comes in. In outsourced assembly and testing, CG Power solution comes in. 
Also in a semiconductor plant, high grade stainless steel tubes are required. Under this Venus pipes, Ratnamani metals and tubes limited are there. Under semiconductor CDMO contract, Jubilant is working on four special chemicals that are required for semiconductor manufacturing. Similarly like this, Tejas network is working on designing of semiconductor chips for 5G networks. The next category is ERD services. In this category, players typically focus on design, development and testing. And also they focus on the maintenance process of this whole development chain. Here Tata Alexi, SCL, Scient, LNT technology services are involved. The next category is polymers. Here Gujarat Fluorochemicals is making the chemicals for the polymers that are used in semiconductor manufacturing. Like this Mac Power and Jyoti are there for the manufacturing of CNC machines. So basically these are computer numerical controlled machines which are pre-programmed computer softwares and they are used to control the movement of different parts of factory tools. Now we will going to discuss about these four companies which are involved in the OSET part in which assembling, packaging and the testing of semiconductor is done. Just keep in mind that globally a OSET company have an average ROCE of 15 to 20 percent. In India, CG Power has tied up with Renasas and Star Microelectronics for setting up a OSET plant in Gujarat. The size of Capex is 7600 crores over 5 years and companies expecting 10% of PVT margin. Also, the fabrication unit of Tata Electronics is coming up in the 4th quarter of 2027. In 3rd quarter of 2027, the traditional OSET will be functional and in the 2nd quarter of 2028, advanced OSET part will be functional. In total, these integrating circuit packaging business have a market size of $67 billion and it is divided into traditional packaging and advanced packaging. Now you guys have an idea how a semiconductor sector can be divided into multiple different categories. So whenever in India the semiconductor market booms, you have an idea where to invest and how to invest. And according to your business understanding and interest, you can pick any of these 13 categories which are going to get benefit from semiconductor boom. If you get any value out of this video, you can like our channel and make sure to subscribe to our channel. In case you have any question or queries, you can comment down and also you can scan this QR code to join our WhatsApp community group. It's free of cost.